There was no sign of him. No reckon he went back to the ranch. Nah, he's probably found some old girl who couldn't resist his boyish charm. <laughs> Good notion to take your friend on over there for free. Yeah, well, let me stop you. It's just my brother. Still say I could have stuck with you for four rounds. Yeah, well, we'll try it again sometime when your old mate ants aren't around. All right, boys, drinks on Dave Donovan. Go get a drink on Dave. We didn't know you had a bet with that feller. You think you could ask me first before you'd butt your nose in and make a fool out of me in front of everybody? I thought we made a mistake. You never get sore. You've been fighting all over town. Look, it's my life and I like it. Now, I don't tell you what to do. I don't want you to tell me what to do. Stop drinking my beer. I want you to quit following me around. Joe, there ain't nobody following you around. First of all, we ain't got the strength. We just came to tell you Paul wants to see you. And what about? He just wants to see you, that's all. Yeah, well, you tell Pod. Tell him what, little brother? Yeah. What's the message? Tell Pa I'll be, I'll be coming along. A few more drinks. Let you boys along, but I know at your age, you're gonna have some sleep. Family, we talk to each other. We don't mumble under our breath. Come here. <clears throat> I'd like to know what happened in town this afternoon. Nothing happened. I was just having a, f a little fun, that's all. I don't like the idea of a son of mine brawling around town like a drunken cowboy. Now, Pa, I wasn't drunk and I wasn't brawling. If you two are going to tell it, why don't you tell it straight? You know, if you don't start using a decent tone of voice with me, I might just have to give you that punch in the jaw I owe you. Yeah, why don't you start right now? That's just enough out of both of you. Paul, little Joe's been spoiling for a fight for three weeks. Why don't you let him have it? Well, come on. That goes for you, too. Now, just a minute. This will go for you three. If you can't talk to each other without fighting, get on up to bed. Now, go on. Not you, Joseph. I want to talk to you. Now, what's this all about? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're spending a lot of time away from the Ponderosa lately. I'd like to know why. Why can't I have some fun without the whole family jumping on me? I'm not jumping on you. Sure, I think everybody should have a little fun. But at the proper times and with the proper companions. I don't know. I don't know it's because I'm the youngest or what. No matter what I want to do or where I want to go, there's Hoss and Adam, ready to tell me what to do and what not to do. And help? Oh, yeah, help, whether I want it or not. Well, don't you think we ought to help each other? Not all the time, Pa. I've spent my whole life on the Ponderosa seeing the same old faces and doing the same old things. 
I'd always figured that... the Ponderosa was your future as well as that of your brother's. How can I prove if I'm good at anything by myself? Joe, you don't have to prove yourself to us. I'm not trying to prove myself to you, Pa. I'm trying to prove myself to me. What is it you're trying to prove? I don't know whether... whether I'm good enough, whether I'm old enough, or whether I'm smart enough to do something by myself without three people waiting there to help me every time I stub my toe. Pa, it's not that I don't appreciate what you... Well, I guess every young man wants to strike out on his own. It's just that father doesn't like to face up to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what gets into me sometimes. I, I, I get restless or something, I don't know. Hey, what are you doing here? Huh? When you were in town, you must have heard about that new mine they're opening up on the other side of Sun Mountain. Yeah. Well, Bert Crawford of the Sun Mountain Company is asking for bids to supply the timbering. Bids? Will Povey was in town lining the men up. He says he's got that contract in the bag. Mm. I guess he will have, as usual. Yeah. Hey, what's this, this little circle you got here? Hmm? Hey, didn't that stand of fur right above Buckhorn Meadow? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's ten miles closer to the mine than any timber Will Povey's gonna bring in. You're not thinking of bidding, are you? Well, I'd sure like to. But as Adam points out, most of that ten miles is straight up and down. It's, it, it's too tough a job. Anyway, we've got enough to keep us busy right here at home. Yeah, that's, uh... That's something else I wanted to say. I... I haven't been pulling my share of the load here at the ranch, and I'm gonna change that starting tomorrow. Well, I'm for bed. How about you? No, I think I'll just stay up and read for a while, but I, I don't worry. I'll get to bed in time and get up early and start working. Night, son. Good night, Pa. been up all night? Yeah, well, I have. Here, take a look. I got it all figured out. You got what figured out? How to get that buckhorn fur to the Sun Mountain mine and beat Will Povey's oh, price. Oh, now, Joe. Well, Adam I can and do Hoss it. went up. What? I can do it. I've got it fig all the figures right here. Look. Uh, what's this? It's the most papers I've seen you with since you was in school. And up early, too. Well, Joe's decided that he's going to bid on that Sun Mountain timber contract for us. The timber contract? Well, we'd agree it was too big a risk. Yeah, what about Will Povey? Yeah, what about Will Povey? I thought about Povey. I'll underbid him by plenty and still make a good profit. Well, you know, Povey can play pretty rough. That's fine with me, too. He wants to play rough, I'll hire a crew that plays rougher. Yeah? Who you got in mind? I figure for a foreman, Dave Donovan. He's young and he's tough. Donovan? He's a good man, Pa. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're sure you can do it? I know I can do it. Well, I say let Joe do as he wants to. Huh? Good luck, little brother. Thanks. Tell you what, I'll get you Jake Weber. He'll make you a great foreman. He's a good woodman, too. Adam, I told you I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan. All right, I'll take a few days off and help you myself. Hey, yeah, me too. The range can wait, can't you, Paul? I don't need any help. Now, look, this is my idea, it's my job, and I want to do it by myself. Is that agreed, Pa? Yeah. Well, see you around. Good luck. Joe? Come here. I want you to do something for me. Well, what's that? Break these. Break these? 
right. Wait a minute. You wouldn't think they'd... Holy... Well, I can't do it, Bob. That's right. Well, they're together like this. You can't break them. But... Singly, they can be broken. By himself. Each one of us can be broken. Never let pride stand in your way, son. We're all here, if you need us. I'll remember that part. Everybody get started on this idea. Those trees aren't gonna cut themselves. <laughs> Mr. Povey. Right. Here's my bid. Uh, getting in just under the wire. Six minutes. What's old Hawkins doing out here from San Francisco? He's just looking around. I'll still make the final decision, Will. I'm counting on that. This is an important contract. You've got the low bid. You're as good as in. If you want your cut, I'd better be. I think I'm gonna just check my figures over on this bid, make sure I got everything correct before I turn it in. Man, you're as pitched as a fox in a forest fire. I know I am. Oh. You bidding? Uh huh. Betting it kind of fine, aren't you? Bid's closed any minute now. Yeah, well, I'll make it. Kind of young to be bidding on a big contract like this. Look, d do me a favor. Don't, don't don't talk to me right now. I'm trying to add these figures up. It's kind of hard for me. All right. Seventeen times seven. Hundred nineteen. Thanks. That's your bid. Uh huh. Yep. Awful low, isn't it? No, it's an honest bid. About time Sun Mountain got one. I don't follow that, son. It's real simple. They've been getting built out of their timber contracts for a long time. Well, now, wouldn't the folks that run the company put a stop to that sort of thing? Hmm? No, I mean, stop it. What do they know about it? The company's probably run by some fat old money bag sitting behind a desk in San Francisco. Couldn't tell you beans about the mining business. Bid's closed. Uh-oh. Wait a minute, I got one more. I'm afraid that bid's too late. What do you mean, too late? I've, I've been here all the time. I was just rechecking my figures. Bid's acceptable, Mr. Crawford. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, Mr. Hawkins, president of Sun Mountain, and I will now examine the bids. Gentlemen, we'll announce our decision in a few minutes. Your papers, young man. I don't know what your name is, mister, but I want to thank you a lot. The name's Hawkins. You look kind of sick. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm in great shape. It's called the president of the mining company and old fat money bags. Gather round, gentlemen.
Mr. Crawford and I have examined all the bids. For instance, Mr. Povey here has offered a very good price. Well, I've always tried to give Sun Martin the best deal I can, Mr. Hawkins. Crawford here can tell you that. Yes, indeed. This time, I'm afraid it isn't quite good enough. We have a few that are somewhat lower. In fact, Joseph Cartwright here is considerably below you, Mr. Povey. Well, he can deliver Ponderosa Pine, Mr. Hawkins, but the contract calls for fur. And that's what I intend to deliver. Well, you're not talking about that stand of fur up above Buckhorn Meadow, are you? Yeah, I might be. Well, you'd never get it out. That country goes straight up and down between the mine and there. Is that true, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir, that's true, but I've taken that into consideration in my bid. Mr. Hawkins, you can't take this... Quiet, please. I like your spunk, young man, and your price. Joseph Cartwright wins the contract. Thank you, sir. See that you deliver that timber, young man. Don't worry, you can count on me. And, uh, you're a lot thinner than I pictured you. Good luck, son. I'm sorry, Will. I did my best. Yeah, I'll bet you. This is liable to cost you quite a bit of money. Both of us. Unless we can do something about it. You son of a gun, you did it! Well, Will, why here's this? Like I said, it's a lot of money. Joe Cartwright. Say, that bit of yours came as quite a surprise to me, young fella. Well, uh, you know, Mr. Crawford, I kind of got the idea you didn't want me to get that contract. Ah, uh, whatever's best for the company. I'm glad to hear you say that. We'll do a good job for you. Fine. Now, just as soon as you post the performance bond, we'll sign the contract. Post the what? Performance bond. $5,000 cash. Oh, wait a minute, that... There's nothing about that in the contract. Mr. Hawkins didn't even mention it. He didn't have to. It's company policy, standard procedure in all our contracts. Well, you can ask him yourself if you want to. You do have the 5,000, don't you? You wouldn't have time to ride out to the Ponderosa and get it. I need it by sundown. That's company policy, too. I think I understand. Can you get your money by sundown? Well, looks like I don't have a job after all, huh? Don't worry, you got a job so as we get to the bank. You know, I think I'm going to enjoy seeing how a man gets his hands on 5,000 great big dollars. You know something? I'm going to kind of enjoy seeing it myself. <laughs> Let's go. If your father wants to co-sign the loan, of course you can have it. You can have twice that amount. Mr. Simpson, I don't have time for that. Isn't there some way? Couldn't I make it a personal loan? <laughs> I'm afraid that's something else again. What do you want the money for? For a performance bond on the Sun Mountain Timber contract. How'd you get that contract away from Will Povey? By underbidding him. More than $10,000. I'd say you made a very foolish bid. Why, the wagons alone are... I don't need wagons. Gonna build a flume. A flume? That's right, I'm gonna build a flume right down to the Truckee River. Here. Okay, I'm gonna float those logs right down to the mine. It's gonna work. I figured it all out. Oh, big. Joe, that might work. Did your brother Adam figure this out for you? My brother Adam had nothing to do with it. I figured this out all by myself. Do I get the loan or not? I'll grant the loan. But remember, if you don't deliver, you're out $5,000. Plus the interest. I'll deliver. Don't you worry about it. I'll deliver. You, uh, 
uh, have your receipt book with you, Crawford? Come on, I got a lot of things to do. Let me have the receipt. Yeah, well, you heard the man, Crawford. Count the money and give him a receipt. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to get over the look on that Crawford's face when I handed him that $5,000 in cash. He never thought I was going to raise that money. Why do you figure that? I mean, why? It's a lot of money, that's why. Your name's Cartwright, ain't it? Well, that had nothing to do with it. It was my idea about the flume that sold him on giving me that loan. Ah, oh, come on, Joe. You know you had your family behind you. What kind of chance would I have raising $5,000? Yeah, what difference does it make? We got the money, didn't we? I want you to go out and give me some men. Sure. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, nothing. You're gonna do it tonight. First thing in the morning, we're going to work. All right, all right. I'll eat some money. What for? You know, spread around, buy some drinks, yeah. get the men. you're right. Oh, it's getting thinner. Say, uh, while you're in there, do you think maybe I could get about a $50 advance? I'm a little short myself. I don't see why not. You're my foreman, aren't you? See you later, Jack. Right. Good uh, evening. I'm, uh, I'm Jake Weber. Jake, yeah. John Cartwright. Right. Nice to see you. I heard tell you got that Sun Mountain contract. I'm open to work right now. Well, I've already got a foreman, Dave Donovan, here. Hi. Right. Excuse me, I got some work to do. Right, good luck. He's a pretty good man. Well, that's as may be. You're gonna need a couple of straw bosses, and uh, I need to work. Jake, tell me something. My brother Adam sent you? Nope. My pa? If you don't want me, just say so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake, it's got nothing to do with it. I can use you. Say the word, and I can fetch along a lot of my old crew. Good, that's great. I can use every man I can get. I'm gonna camp tomorrow morning up in Buckhorn Meadow. I'll see you on the job, boss. I'll have the men start setting up. All right, good to have you with us. Thanks. Thank you, boys, one and all. Now, you are what I call a pretty fair country poker player. Yep. Cards are like the old reliable meat in a pot to me. Yeah, well, it cleans me. Bar, keep more whiskey over here. Hey, you're not leaving so early, are you? Well, it stopped being early two hours ago. Holy smoke, I clean forgot. I'm supposed to be getting men to fill a payroll here. Say, you fellas wouldn't want to come to work for me, would you? No. You better watch your language. No, I'm serious. The work's not hard. Top dollar. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give a bottle of whiskey to every man who signs on with me. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Bring him on. I wondered when you'd be along. All right, what's the barrier for, Povey? Well, you see, I bought myself a piece of timber that goes through here. Now, I wouldn't want to close off a road, but seeing as how I own it, you wouldn't blame me for charging toll, would you? Right, you name your price, I'll pay it. I figure $25 a wagon ought to do it. I figure a poke in the nose would Take do... it easy, Dave. $25? Well, that's just fine and dandy, Poby. Get it. Okay, open it up. It's going to cost you $25 every time one of your wagons comes through here. And you're going to need a lot of wagons. I hope you figured that in your bid. Okay, open it up. Open it up. Hey. Be careful that log doesn't hit you in the face when it swings back now. He's bluffing. What makes you think so? At $25 a wagon load, that would break him. I saw that bid. He hasn't got enough margin. I don't look like much. 
Looks ain't everything in a working man, Joe. They're spry and full of spirit. I can smell that. I'll whip them in the shape. You'll see. There's no work in them. I know they're kind. You let me worry about that, mister. Neither you or me has got this deadline, Donovan. I'm the foreman. I can handle it. Brother Adam and send him packing in five minutes. Now, Brother Adam's not bossing this job, Jake. I am. I right, call the men together. I want to talk to them. All right, you men. Gather on. All right, let's get on. on your feet. Boss, let's go. To talk to you. Come on. Now, we got a pretty tough job ahead of us. We're going to build a flume from here to the Truckee River. I'm a fair man. I'm not going to ask any of you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. But I do want a dollar's work for a dollar's pay. We got a deadline on this job. We can meet it if we all pitch in together. We can meet it with time to spare. We're going to work in two crews. Loggers will work under Jake Weber. That's the you man under Dave Donovan. And there'll be no drinking on the job. Any questions? All right, let's get to work. All right, come on, let's go. All right, men, let's go back to work. On a double. Hey, Dave, you see the bottle? Sure. You must be dry after a big speech like that. Hey, what's the big idea? You heard what I just said, no drinking. It goes for everybody. You're getting kind of hard-nosed, aren't you, boy? Expecting you to get the same way. Come on, Foreman. I thought you were going to whip these men into shape. Sure. because we don't feel so good. If you don't feel good, go pick up your time. Now, come on, get moving. Dave! Dave Donovan! Come on, move. Yeah, Joe? Look, Dave, I don't want 100 yards of this flume finished by tonight. 100 yards? It's impossible. It's not impossible if you keep these men working. Now, let's get going. All right. OK, you men, get your backs in time. Let's go! Because he's a car driver, he thinks he can push everybody around. How much longer are you going to put up with him? To pay it. That's tomorrow. Ah, moving this big stuff is mighty slow work, Joe. We're falling behind. Yeah, I know, Jake. We can use some more horses. That sure would help. All right, I'll leave right away. If I don't get back by tomorrow, I want you to pay them in anyway. All right. But I don't think them Donovan men are earning their pay. Jake, don't worry about Dave's men. They're going to do their share of the work. If you say so. Hey, Weber. Put shot on timber down at our end. Keep those logs moving. How's it going, Foreman? Pretty good. I'm gonna leave for a day to get a couple more teams of horses. I want you to keep the men working just the way they are. Right. You can count on me.
tell you, boys, you so associate with the right people. And lady luck begins to shine. Well, sit down, boss. We're celebrating payday. All right, suppose you all get back to work. That goes for you, too, Dave. Hey, wait a minute. This is old Donovan, remember? Dave, you're drunk. Now, don't give me any trouble. Don't give you any trouble? How does it feel to be a big man? Money, giving orders, snapping your fingers and everybody jumping. I don't know what's got into you, but I'm going to say it just one more time, all of you. Get back to work. We ain't through celebrating yet, are we, boss? <laughs> it looks like I just lost a foreman. Pack up your things and get out. All right. If I leave, my boys go with me. All right, any of you that want to stay and work, that's fine. If not, you better follow him. Well, I'm staying. Come on, let's get back to work. Card ride. Lots of luck. You're gonna need it. Uh, <laughs> all right, man, let's get to it. Jerry, take your men and finish up down to the south board. Smitty, you and your men get your tools and follow me. Come on, now, let's go. Like I told you, I've been keeping an eye on him up here. What do you think? Still has a long way to go. Think we ought to help him? No, let's bring him to the side. That little great big Joe Cartwright fire, yeah? Can't cut with them, can you, huh? Cartwright's got all the money. Run you right out of town, huh, Dave? Cartwrights are gonna come in town with a gun and go, tell you, ain't nothing. I heard Cartwright find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he tossed me a crumb and he took it away. I thought he was one of us, but I made a mistake. He belongs up there in that big house. Well, I thought you two were good friends. Me? I ain't got a big house and a stand of timber and a magic name. I'm just riffraff to the Cartwrights. You know, I learned a long time ago that this is the only true friend a man's got. How would you like a lot of these true friends? What's your proposition? $500 now. And $500 when Joe Cartwright forfeits his bond. Think you can do it? Mr. Povey, you just bet on a sure thing. You with me? All the way. Make sure you got them all secured good, Bobby. Right, Joe. Look at that, Jake. Another half a mile and we can start the logs rolling. I can tell you now, Joe. I never thought you'd do it. I want to thank you and the men for sticking by me. Thanks. Hey, Brennan! What's the matter? Are you getting tired? I'm saving my strength to beat your head in when this job's finished. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, you both get a chance when the job's finished. We can all sleep for about three months. Cover me. I'm gonna go take care of that flume. Well, come on! 
You gonna let somebody shoot at you and not do anything about it? You men stay right where you are. I hired you as loggers, not gunmen. There's only another half mile of flume to build. We can make it if we fight them off. Jake, I'm not gonna risk the lives of these men just to fill a lumber contract. I thought it was you. How's it going, son? trouble and I know what to do with. Tell me about it. I don't know what good it'll do to talk about it now. Hmm? Might do some good. I told you my trouble's a time or two. Yeah. Well, I... I made every mistake in the book. I trusted Donovan. I could handle Povey. Well, I handled him all right. He hired some gunmen. They blew up a section of the flume. Anyone hurt? I had one man winged. I told Jake and the men to quit. I, I couldn't ask them to risk their lives. Hey, Joe. You saw your horse out there when we come out of the barn. We've uh, run into a little trouble. What are you going to do, give up? It's not what I want to do. I just don't have any choice. I can't do it alone. Well, Joe, we're still here, if you need us. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do for three or four days. Well, yeah, free as a bird. Yeah, I got... But a dozen men sitting around doing nothing but collecting wages. Oh. Yeah, well, let's go, then. <laughs> hey, hey, what a blow, huh? <laughs> there he is. Povey! Crawford! Lieutenant! I'd have been here a little sooner, but I've been out doing a little celebrating. I'm here for the other 500. Well, you almost made it, Donovan. Well, what do you mean by that? That whole Cartwright crew moved out when I blasted that flume. The trouble is, you're only half right. Crawford here went up to check on Cartwright's progress. Well, his crew left, all right. But while you were out celebrating, they've come back. Not only Weber and his crew, but the whole Cartwright family and all their ranch hands. His family? But Joe would never ask them. You just made another mistake. He asked them, all right. Just hold that second 500. I'll get them. You figuring on taking that whole crowd on by yourself? 
One at a time. You must want that extra 500 awful bad. No. No, it's not the 500. It's a personal thing, no. Well, you know, I think Adam's idea will work. Yeah. Boss, Adam, how about getting started on that A-frame right away? Right. Jake, you should take these group of men down to the unfinished lower section and get it finished right away. All right, boys. Let's get going. I better get her blocking falls from camp. I'll get them. You get down there and make sure they get started. Hey, Jake. Tell them thanks for coming back. We're glad to be back, Joe. Hey, you. Uh, how about being foreman for me while I'm gone? I sure, I'd be glad to, boss. <laughs> You heard what the boss said. Let's get to work. Family man. What do you want, Dave? Well, now, I thought I wanted some money. But now I want more than that. All right, exactly what is it that you want? I wonder what that fine family of yours is going to think when they come up here and find you. Of course, your pa's got two other sons. He won't miss you much. All right, Dave, come on. Come on. Thanks, bye. What about this on? I figured I could take you. Finally had to bring your family in, didn't you? That's right, I called them. I guess that's where I made my mistake. I figured they'd let you down. The way my family let me down. Will you knock it off? I'm sick and tired of hearing the way your family let you down. Did you ever stop to think for one minute maybe you let them down? But you might have let a lot of people down. The only help you're gonna understand you're gonna get from Sheriff Coffey.
looks like he did it, boy. No, we did it, Pa. Gee, look at that. Well, I guess you won't be needing us anymore. What do you mean I won't be needing you anymore? We're not the three greatest workers in the world, but I can't beat the price. <laughs> <laughs> It is hot, Cartwright. No relief in sight, either. Scorcher, all right. That's what's worrying me. Worrying about the weather won't do any good? Uh, the weather may... may prevent my son Hoss from getting here with the cash on time. We got to five o'clock. possibility of extending that deadline. I've told you, Mr. Cartwright. We've already got another offer for that land in cash. Now, I can't risk losing that to extend your option. I could pick up that option right this second if you'd only accept my bank draft for 12000 I don't understand you being so stubborn about it. Look, since the drought set in, we've accepted too many drafts that have turned out to be no good. Like this one here. I've got a whole drawer full of them. I'm sorry, but my clients insist on cash. Uh, cash. It wasn't such a good piece of land. But it is, Mr. Cartwright. And you know it. Yes, sir. Sure is a hot one. Don't make a move. Name's Deadman. I'm the county sheriff. Well, I'm sure glad to see you. I'm a little jumpy with a lone rider coming up on me out here. What do you got to be jumpy about? Well, I mean, with the drought being what it is, there's quite a few hard cases roaming around. Yeah. Sorry about the gun. How about a cup of coffee? What's that for? I like to have a look in those saddlebags. Any objection? I don't I have much choice, do I, Sheriff? Move back. You've got a lot of money here. I'm delivering it to Scotchburg for my paw. It's a land deal. You can prove that. Of course I can. Suppose you come with me and we do that. Come where? Dutchman's Flats, about eight miles yonder. Sheriff, look, I gotta be in Scotchburg at five o'clock this afternoon. You'll make it. Unless we stand here all day arguing about it. What are you going to charge me with? I could charge you with building a fire on rangeland or something more serious. Like what? Like maybe you're part of the gang that held up the bank at Dutchman's Flats and killed the teller. Now, you want to get on your horse and let's get this thing over with?
Well, it sure ain't much of a town, is it? It's a hot one, I'll say that. Think you could stand a cold beer? Yeah. Morning, Milt. Morning, yes. I can't remember it being so hot for so long. Too long. Everything's burnt to a crisp. Yeah, that's very... Jesse. Now, Milt, I know what you're going to say. I must ask you again. If I can't extend credit, the farmers and ranchers are going to have to move out. And I can't do anything about that unless you give me a loan. Milt. You know as well as I do that since the robbery, the bank is almost without funds. Jesse, you've just got to do something. You're the banker in this town. People depend on you for help. Well, don't you think I know that? Well, then why don't you do something? What are you just sitting around for? Now, wait a minute. I'm getting sick and tired of you and everybody else in this town blaming me for this robbery. I lost as much, if not more, than anybody. Remember, it was my own son-in-law who was shot and killed. Now, that's all you have on your mind, Milt. I'm sorry, Jesse. It's just that I've got to say no to all those farmers that come to the store all the time. I told them I'd talk to you. What they don't understand is there's nothing I can do. If I only had a little more time, I've tried to negotiate a loan from every bank in this territory. But everybody is hit as hard with this drought as we are. Then I say this town is going to die. Just as sure as that dang sun comes up every morning. How's Marianne? How do you think she is? Her husband dead? Good day, Mary Ann. It's nice to see you about again. Well, Conley? I'm sorry, Larson. Wait a minute. Don't give me that. The bank just turned me down. Look, I got a house full of kids, and I'm not going to let them go hungry. I can't give you what I haven't got. I got it right from a feller that talked to a feller who knew the brother of one of the men that was right there. Hockey, there was two bears. You know what he told me? I'll tell you what he told me, son. He told me there was grasshoppers. Millions of them. Fifty miles north of here. Just a chewing up everything in sight. All right, you know Jeff, what? Here's money. I... Them grasshoppers is going to be down on us as sure as shooting. There ain't no grasshoppers north of here, mister. <sighs> who told you that? Ain't nobody told us that. We just rode through there yesterday. And I say there's grasshoppers up there, millions of them. And I say there ain't. That storekeeper, that no good tight rut hypocrite, he won't give anybody any credit. Well, it's the drought. That's what's the trouble, Ned. It's that bank robber laid this town low. I tell you, them robbers got all their money. Yeah, there's nothing being done about them. Sheriff Stedman, he's riding all around the country, finding nothing. You, 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 you leave the sheriff out of it. I work for him, and he's a good man. Oh, let me wear a gun. Yeah, I know, I know. I was in the bank the day it happened. I could have prevented the whole thing. Yeah, Shooky, it's too hot to go through all that again. Yeah, but I mean... I've heard it 900 times in the last few weeks. Yeah, but I still could have prevented the whole thing. Yeah. Fight! <laughs> Come on! Fight! Fight! I'm coming! <laughs> Million grasshoppers? Yeah.
minute, wait a minute. It's too dang hot to fight about, grasshopper. Well, you're right. Have a beer. Wasn't much of a fight. Better no fight at all. Uh, at least it was a little excitement, huh? Uh, come on, Ted, let's get this place back together. Not much. Just hold it right there. All right, get down. All right, inside. Yeah, it must be something. Riding a $50 horse. Gee, sure is a big man. Oh, sure is. Just like the one. Like one what? I gotta give the sheriff a hand. What's going on, Sheriff? What does that fella do? Caught him starting a fire on Rangeland. Says his name's Cartwright. Oh. All right. Oh, now, Sheriff, come on, will you? Sheriff knows where I got the money. Look, Sheriff, I gotta be in Scottsburg in three hours. The sheriff's too smart to turn you loose. You might be a bank robber or some such. Sheriff, look, all you gotta do is send a telegraph to the land office in Scottsburg. My Paul will verify my story. You, you're awfully fidgety for an honest man. Chucky. Yes, sir? Go stable a man's horse. See that it's rubbed down. Right away, Sheriff. Hey, Chucky. Uh -huh. Who was that the sheriff caught? Says his name is Cartwright. You know, he had fifteen thousand dollars in gold in them saddlebags. Fifteen thousand in gold? Uh-huh. You think he stole it? Wouldn't surprise me at all. Of course he said he didn't, but being the sheriff think he's lying. We're gonna hold him in jail for a while. Um I got some things to do. See you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Barber. Hey, McCray. Barber. McCray. McCray, listen. Stedman's caught himself a good one this time. You mean that fellow he brought in a while ago? Yeah, he had better than $20,000 in gold in his saddlebag. You know who he is? Well, his name is Cartwright or something like that. Listen, I'll see you later, okay? Hey. He must be the one. Hey, make yourselves home. I'll be right back. $20,000, huh? Well, you're not in any of these wanted posters. That ain't too surprising. Sheriff, are you going to send that telegram or not? Yep. I guess I'll send it now. I wish it wasn't so blasted hot. I just want to congratulate you. About what? Oh, now, don't be so modest. Yeah, let's uh, step in out of the heat for a minute. Sit down, Sheriff. Take a load off your feet. No, thanks. I haven't got much time. Larson tells me you caught us a big-time desperado. 
You mean that Cartwright fellow? That's right. The whole town's talking about it. That was pretty slick, catching him red-handed that way without even having to fire a shot. And I hear he was carrying 25,000 in bullion. 12,000, to be exact. Just about what they took from the bank. Just about. But that doesn't make him one of the robbers. No, but if he did turn out to be one of the robbers, that'd be quite a feather in your cap. Might even change this town's opinion of you. I'm going to send a telegraph to Scottsburg. If they back up his story, I'm going to let him go. Sheriff, just having that fellow in jail has had quite a stimulating effect on this town. Do you have to be in all that hurry to send it? Hey, Tom, I was just telling Connolly about that fellow you caught. Yeah. yeah, sure sounds like he could be one of the fellows who robbed the bank. All I know about him is what he's told me. You know, Sheriff, I never thought you'd do it. Do what? Well, do something about them robbers that ruined this town. Yeah. Well, we believe you now, Sheriff. And when the next elections come up, we'll be remembering it. We'll just do more than that. We'll buy you a drink right now. No, I... Come on, Sheriff. Some come on, come, come on. on. Let's go come on, let's drink. drink. Come on. Howdy, Sheriff. Glad to see you. Let me buy you a drink. Yeah, I, Sheriff. You deserve a free drink. You know, it's all around town that uh, you're pretty sure that Cartwright's one of the gang that robbed the bank. I didn't say that. Well, you're not saying he ain't either. It's all right, Sheriff. Shooky said he recognized him. Did Shooky say that? Well, not in so many words, but uh, we knew what he meant. Well, just having him in jail makes me feel a lot better. Me too. Got to hand it to you, Tom. Thanks for the beer, man. I got to send a telegraph. keeping an eye on things. Thanks, Shucky. Shucky, have you been telling folks around town that this fellow we got in here is one of the bank robbers? Well, I... I was in the bank when it happened, you know. You could identify him as one of the gang. Well, no, I, I, I didn't say that. I just said that one of the robbers was a big fellow, is all. If he was to go on trial, would you swear before a judge that he was there? Yes, sir. I could rightfully say that one of the robbers was a big fella and that he killed Fillmore's son-in-law. You could. Sheriff, are you going to hold him for trial? I don't know. I've got to do some checking. You stay here. You mean... You mean sit here and, and guard a desperate killer without a gun? Behind bars? Oh, nevertheless, it ain't right. It just ain't right. I know, I just know that if I had a gun that day in the bank, I could have prevented the whole robbery. Sure, you could. Sh Sheriff? Mr. Fillmore, I've been puzzling. 
What did you mean when you said not to be in any hurry to identify that prisoner? Oh, well, it wasn't important, Tom. I just uh, figured that maybe what this town needed was a good kick in the bridges to get moving again. And just having this fellow in jail might do just that. It hasn't been proven that he was one of the gang. I know that, Tom. But there's no harm in him just sitting there, is there? No. Tell me. If it turned out that he was one of the gang, what would happen? He'd go to trial, of course. I know that. What I mean is the money. It would come back to the bank. And that would just about put this town back on its feet, wouldn't it? It certainly would. And you would be the man who did it. Mary Ann, honey, you shouldn't be out in this heat. Mr. Connolly told me you caught the man who killed my husband. I'm afraid everybody's jumping to conclusions. Sure, I have a suspect, but so far I haven't any proof. Proof? Everyone in town knows he's the one who did it. Are you just going to sit around doing nothing as usual? Now, Mary Ann, the sheriff has done all he could. Has he? Your husband was a friend of mine. Honey, I don't want you to upset yourself. These last few days, you seem to be coming out of it. I don't want you to start brooding again. I'm going over to the jail and see the man who shot Ed. Now, you heard the sheriff say that he had no proof that it was the killer. Will you come with me or not? I told you before, Mrs. Wilson, we're not sure. Ma'am, I ain't killed nobody. Get Chuki Summers in here. Now, Mary Ann, don't make a fuss. He was in the bank at the time of the killing. Maybe he can identify it. I have already talked to him about it. Now, I think we ought to let Shuki make his identification at the proper time. If we go dragging him in here now, we're liable to scare him into making a mistake. Sheriff, my husband has been dead for weeks. Will you please get Shuki in here and let him prove whether this man is the killer or not? Get him, Sheriff. He can tell you I'm not the killer. And maybe you'll let me out of here. Shuki? Yes, Sheriff? We want to see if you can identify the prisoner as the man that killed Ed Wilson. Sheriff, I... Shuki, come on. Just go right over well, here. You see Mrs. Wilson? Come on, Shuki. Oh, Take a good look at it. Now, look. Now, Shuki, you look at him and see if he isn't the man. Look at him. Well, it's... it's been a little while ago. Oh, Shuki, you were the only one who was in the bank at the time. Don't you recognize him? Well, I didn't get a good look at him. You never saw me before today in your life. Now you tell him that. Shuki. You be sure. Oh, Shuki. You're the only one who can help me. Now, please. You know he's the man. Please help me. Yep. That's the one I saw, right? I can't understand it. I shall be here by now. Maybe you never got your telegraph. I better check on that. You know, you still got a little time on your option. Well, right now, the option isn't important. My son is. And except for your stubbornness about cash, I wouldn't have to be worrying about him now. I'm sorry, but that's the way it had to be. Well, uh, I thought I recognized him when he first came into town. Yeah, well, you sure did the town a great favor, Shooky. <laughs> you sure did all right, Shooky. <laughs> you know, that means we might get our money back. Happy yeah. for you. 
Come on, we'll take it down by your beard. Yeah, come on. Oh, come no, on. no, no. I, I got to stay in. Oh, he wants me to stay with him. Wait a minute. Come on, let the widow through here, fellas. Come on. Right through here. Let the widow, let the widow. Oh, Tom, uh, how about letting us take a look at him, huh? Yeah, how about it, Sheriff? All right. All right, now, boys. Right, let's get... no, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. We've got to do this orderly now. Okay, okay now. All right, you go. Yeah, you go. All right. Okay. All right. You thieving murder. Uh, don't talk to the prisoner. Keep him moving. <laughs> They're going to hang you, sure. I said don't talk to the prisoner. Keep it moving now. Let everybody have a chance here. Uh, When's the trial going to be, Sheriff? Circuit judge won't be around for a few weeks. <laughs> That'll be something. And the hanging. I don't want to miss that. I'm afraid you won't see that, McCray. Look, Keep it moving. Why not? He Keep held up at the prison. Well, was that for sure? For sure. Shoot. I was counting on that hanging. Hmm. What happens to all that money? Go back to the bank as soon as the judge releases it. Why can't you go to the bank now? The town could sure use it. Because it's a law. That money stays right in that safe until the prisoner's found guilty. It's a shame. Seeing as how it's our money. Uh, don't talk to the prisoner. Keep yeah. him. That's a shame, McCray. Why don't you get out of here? Shooky, get these fellas out of here. All right, now, everybody, keep moving. Everybody, out. Everybody. Come on, Harsh. It's the thought of that Cartwright makes my blood boil. Him and that $50 horse. Yeah, well, I've been thinking of Cartwright, too. Can't you just imagine the high life he's been living? The liquor he's drunk, the women, the fine food he's been eating. Oh, he's had it real good. You can bet on that. That is gravity, though. All that stolen blood money. He ain't gonna get away with it. Oh, well, he's probably gonna get off. My law wouldn't allow anything like that to happen. Yeah, men like him use the law, Ned. You get a smart lawyer and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, why didn't I think of that? Them outlaws know all the ins and outs. Well, they could even... They... That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Well, he can't get away with that. Some of the good people in this town see that he don't. But nothing's gonna happen. Unless maybe, uh... Maybe you got an idea, Ned. Well, might have. Yeah. Yeah, just might have. I've never seen it so hot. You know, Tibbs, that old jail over there ain't nothing but an old broken down cracker box. Yeah. Twenty thousand. Sure is a powerful lot of money. That's a lot more than I've ever seen. Me too. You thinking what I'm thinking? When it gets dark. Larson here's got something important to say. Yeah, I sure do. Listen, that thief and murder sitting up in our jail, that 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 quite right fella's gonna get off scot-free if we give him half a chance. He's right. Ed right. Wilson was a friend of yours, and he's a friend of mine. I say it's up to us to punch the fella and shot him down in cold blood. I say we take care of that fella ourselves. That's right, yeah. Yeah. What's all the shouting about? I ain't sure, but 
I got a pretty good idea. I mean, they're up there talking about, about a lynching. Lynching? Oh, that's probably just talk. <laughs> not just talk. I mean, they're going to do it. They're talking about putting a, putting a rope around his neck and, and lynching him. Jerry, you got to do something Jerry, about it. Jerry, you're drunk. Now, you get inside, get some coffee and sober up. I'm going to need you. And you, you get over to that saloon and try to talk some sense into those fellas. Well, you're the sheriff, Tom. Isn't that your job? There's a telegraph we didn't send that just might have proved that man in there is innocent. Hey, what's all the ruckus out there? Uh, oh, no, nothing. Just, uh, just some of the fellas whooping it up a little, is all. Well, how come you ain't whooping it up? Oh, Sheriff said he wanted me to stay here. He said he needed my help. Mm, your help, huh? Like the way you put the finger on me? Well, uh, at least you can do it. Give me a cup of that coffee. Sure. Here you go. Thanks. Why did you do it, little man? Cartwright, put him down. Now you go get some sleep tomorrow. Uh, Ain't a man here didn't know Ed Wilson. There wasn't a finer man in this town than Ed Wilson. Now, how many of you fellas got hurt when this, this Cartwright fella stole all your money out of the bank? We gonna let him get away with it? No. Well, I say we ought to string him up right no, here and now. Listen to me. Listen. Oh, you shut up, Fillmore. I won't. Well, then get out of here. Let's listen to what he has to say. Uh, Men, we cannot take the law into our own hands. Oh, wait a minute. You're gonna listen to a man who won't help his own neighbors? No. 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 no! no! Listen to a tight-fisted money grabber that won't give any of us any credit. I can't give you any credit. I haven't anything left to give. Oh, now, Ed Wilson was my son-in-law. And if he were here now, he would say to all of you, don't stain my name with blood. I agree with Mr. Fillmore. Now, you keep out of this, Conley. Now, please, all of you, go home. Before you do something, you'll regret for the rest of your lives. Buy you a drink. Let's show more. Oh, money bags. I shouldn't have listened to him. He don't care if this town dies. Yeah. Forget it. It's all over. Might as well go home. Buy you fellas one more drink on the house. Yeah, all right, Ned. Might as well. Nothing's going to happen anyhow. That Cartwright's going to go free. And tomorrow, things are going to be just the same. It's going to be hot. Busted in here and tried to free that Cartwright. Is that true, Sheriff? We heard him coming, and me and the Sheriff drove him off. But one of them winged the Sheriff. Well, organize a posse and take after him, Sheriff. Go on home. We'll get some guns and be right back, Sheriff. I catch you with guns, you're going to be right in there with him. Sheriff, sure, he go down to the saloon and get me some whiskey for this arm. Right, Sheriff. What were those shots? Cartwright's gang tried to bust him out of jail. Yeah, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to be just a question of time. Will somebody come up here and try to bust him out of here? Now, you want to make one of your fancy speeches about the law taking its course? Now, listen to me. Don't you now listen to me, money bags, and you keep out of this, you're going to wish you had. Let's round everybody up and meet at the saloon. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. You 
You all right, Tom? I'll live. You think those men were really trying to get Cartwright out of here? Well, it's a cinch they were trying to get in here for something. Well, that could prove that he was guilty, couldn't it? It could also prove that they were after that $12,000 I got there in the safe. Sheriff, I had no connection with those two men, and you know it. You're a liar. A dirty, rotten liar. Marianne, I wish you would stay out of this. I can't stay out of it. Now, listen to me. Tom is still not sure that we have the right man. Not sure. Well, I don't care if you're sure or not. Because he's going to get it. You're going to get it, big man. You might be able to fool my father and the sheriff here. But not for long. Because there are other men in this town. Real men. And they're not... Look, you listen to me. They're not going to let you get away with it. They're going to come in here and drag you out. And they're going to put a rope around your neck for killing my Ed. Mary Ed. Don't touch me. Sheriff, the men's gathering around the saloon talking lynch again. Shut up. What's he talking about, Sheriff? It's all that talk about lynching. Just some of the boys down at the saloon got too much of this loud mouth. I can handle it. You can handle it. Sheriff, you know I ain't guilty. You know it. I said I could handle it. You got nothing to worry about it. Didn't mean the sheriff drive off those fellows and try to bust you out. I here. told you I didn't have nothing to do with them fellas. Sheriff, you and me can sneak out of here the back way and, and take a little ride over to Scottsburg, and my paw will prove to you who I am. Oh, you think he's going to go riding through the night with you and let something else happen? Will you shut up? What kind of a man are you, anyhow, Sheriff? A mob down there talking about lynching, and you ain't even willing to try to find out who I am. Well, that man busting in here proved pretty much who you are. Shucky, shut up. Go close the door and lock it. Where's McCray with that rope? Fillmore, you go home. Please, Ned, we're not sure he's guilty. We're still not sure. Well, maybe you're not sure, but we're sure. We've been sure all the time. Listen, you're not bad. Oh, keep money back. I told you to keep out of this. Now you go home. Will you go home? Go home! I got a nice thick one. Strong enough to hang a steer. Are you ready? Shut up, everybody! This ain't a carnival. We got a job to do. So help me God. All right, Shiki. You're a deputy, and here's that gun you've always wanted. Well, what do you want me to do? You're going to uphold the law, and that includes resisting lynchers. Oh, I, I can't do that. I mean, Lawson and McCray, they're our friends. When you're a deputy or a sheriff, you got no friends. Who is it, and what do you want? Ben Cartwright, let me in. Holy might. Paul! The devil's going on here. Get his gun, Chucky. I want to talk to my son. I see all right. Fine, Paul. What's happening here? I just came by the saloon. They're talking about lynching. What did you do? Paul, I didn't do nothing. Your bank was robbed here several days ago, and a fellow got killed, and the sheriff th he thinks it's me. 
put me in here and put our money over there in that safe. This is my son. Well, your son is suspected of murder. How do we know you ain't part of his gang? Two of them tried to bust him out of here, shot the sheriff for the arm doing it. Chucky, shut up. Go outside and see what's going on. You all out of your minds. If your son's innocent, he'll go free. What about that mob out there? Are they going to wait for any proof of innocence? What about them? We'll take care of them. Oh, how? You and your deputy alone? Let's get it done. Yeah. 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 Here they come, Sheriff. You stay here. I'll talk to them. Talk to them? A simple telegraph could have established my son's identity. I got a telegraph from somebody called Fillmore. That's how I knew he was here. Fillmore sent you a telegraph? Yes, at Scottsburg. Bolt this at me. Just a minute, folks. We think we just got proof that the man we got locked up in there is not the man that shot Ed Wilson. A little late for that, Sheriff. If he does turn out to be innocent, you're going to be sorry about this tomorrow. Quit talking, Tom. Get him out here. I can't do that. Now, you don't get out of the way. You ain't going to be Sheriff no longer. But I'm Sheriff now. So you folks go on home now. Gonna shoot us, Tom? People that elected you to office? Try me. Tom, these are these are your friends and neighbors. Come on, Pete. Come on, get him out of here. man's life, my son's life. Now, let me tell you something. You don't want to take his life. You want the money that was stolen from this town. Well, in that jailhouse, there's money, a lot of it. It belongs to me, but you can have it, all of it. Just give my son one more day. Let him stay in that jail for one more day while I prove his innocence, and then you can keep the money. No strings attached. Just give me the time. Money? That's all you think about, the money. No one thinks about my husband. No one thinks about Ed. Don't you see? This is a trick. It's, it's a trick to stall for time. If they broke that man out of jail once a day and they're going to try it again. Are you going to let it happen? Larson, listen to me. What this man has said is right. You're all my friends and neighbors. I know how you feel, but please... Don't do this terrible thing. I say hang them. Hang both of them. Cut him down. Oh, you're all alike. You're do-nothings. You're cowards. Well, I'm not. The man who killed my husband isn't going to get away with this. Marianne, no. No. <laughs> Somebody get a doctor. All right. 
right, you're satisfied? Get on home. Now you lie down easy now. It's not a bad town, Mr. Cartwright. It's just that they quit being people for a while because they're hot and they're dry and they're broke. Yeah. I'm... I'm sorry, son. Howdy, mister. Oh, hi. I was beginning to think the place was deserted. wonder if we might use a little of your water. Help yourself. Sure is a storm blowing up out there. Could be. Night coming on, I wouldn't want to be caught in it. I wonder if I could spend the night. No, can't spend the night. Uh, be glad to stay in the barn. No, this is private property owned by the stage line. I run it. And I say you can water your horse, fill your canteen, and leave. Can't do any harm in the barn. I promise I won't disturb the chickens. Now, I ain't fooling, mister. You get. Put away that gun, Grandpa. You get back in the house. I'm sorry. I don't like to have a gun pulled on me. This is still private property, and you're still trespassing. Don't mind Grandpa. He thinks every man that comes by here is going to grab me and ride away. Well, that's what you want, ain't it, Marty? That's it, ain't it? Maybe. Maybe that's the only way I'll get away from here. Uh, now, listen, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I just want to bed down for the night. I'll be gone in the morning. Oh, here. Be careful with that thing. The next fellow might take you seriously. Now you get in that house and stay away from him. Instead of there. I want you to listen to me, young miss, huh? I don't want any more trouble with your grandfather. So I think it would be best for all concerned if you just turned your little old self around and went back into the house, all right? Grandpa's asleep in the chair. 
Does it every night after supper? I've been watching him do it for eight long years. Yes, well, I still think it would be best if you... Uh... I didn't come here to see you. I came here to get one of my books. Oh? I hide him in here from Grandpa. Why do you hide them? Because they're about places. What kind of places? I'll show you. This one is about New York. It's got pictures in it, too. Have you ever been to New York? Mm-hmm. Really? Well, what's it like? Well, it's uh, big, noisy. It's got lots of people. Oh, yes, that's what I thought. Lots of people. Oh, I bet it's like all the big cities. Rome and, and London and Paris. My grandpa doesn't want me to know about those places. He watches over me all the time. I don't want to even talk to anyone. Especially boys. And men. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you ought to blame your grandfather. I think most men feel protective when it comes to their daughters, granddaughters. Especially when they're pretty. Like you are. My mother was pretty once. I'm sure she was. She hated it here. After my father died, she used to stand out in the yard and watch the stage go. She used to say, someday I'm going to get away from here and never come back. And she left? Yes. A man came in on the stage one day, and he was handsome and rich. He promised to show Ma the whole world. Think she'll ever come back? No. I don't want her to. Oh, really? Well, she got what she wanted. She got away. I drew this of her just before she left. It's very nice. You have talent. How long have you been doing it? Ever since I can remember. I make my own charcoal and use whatever paper I can. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I don't even know who you are. Well, I don't even know who you are. I'm Marty. Marty Johnson. I'm Adam. Adam Cartwright. Been up on the Humboldt River, checking out the range. On the way home. Where do you live? Ponderosa, about 100 miles from here. 100 miles? I haven't been more than 10 miles away from here. I'm beginning to think I'll never get away. Oh, yes, you will. One of these days, some nice young fellow's gonna come along and take you away to those wonderful, mysterious places you've been reading about. Will you take me with you, Mr. Cartwright? No. Why not? Well, first of all, your grandfather would have the law right after me. If my mother was able to do it, why can't I? I didn't mean to frighten you. Who are you? My name is Cody. I've been running from that storm out there. On foot? <clears throat> no, my horse broke his leg in that gully back a few miles. I'd appreciate it if you'd give me some shelter for the evening. Well, uh, this girl's grandfather runs a place here, and uh, I'm afraid it doesn't take too kindly to strangers. As a matter of fact, he pulled a gun on me when I asked for the same thing. Well, I uh, gather he didn't persuade you to leave. Yeah. Just thought I'd warn you. I'm warned. Are you uh, afraid of visitors like your grandfather? No. But Grandpa runs the station. Well, uh, you mind if I have some coffee then? I'm kind of uh, cold and hungry and tired. In that order. Come in the house. Both of you. You are sure you want to do this? You know how Grandfather feels. I want to. Well, this ought to be interesting. Marty! 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 
What are you doing down here? Now, you go on get in that house. I'm going to tan your hide. You're right. He's downright unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Name's Cody. Well, like I said to him, this here's private property. Ain't nobody staying here. Now, go on and get both. Don't. Put it back. I told you about that gun. I was just saying to the young lady here, I'm kind of cold and hungry and tired. And I think I'd be a lot more comfortable inside the house. So let's go, huh? Yeah, I've heard of the Bonderosa. Must be, um... Pretty soft, all in a big spread like that. Well, if you consider working 10, 12 hours a day for oh, 20 years to build it, I guess maybe you're right. Well, there are uh, quicker ways of getting rich, friend. Oh, I'm sure there are. Which way are you headed? The border. I got a little uh, deal down in Mexico. Mexico? Did I hear you say something about Mexico? Yeah, what about it? Marty is interested in faraway places. So was her mother. Look what happened to her. At least she had the courage to get away from here. My mother's been all over the world. A couple of years ago, I got a letter from Paris. Mm, I hear that's a great old town. I bet she really did some living there. Can't you shut up? Now, you stop talking to her like that, filling her head with fool ideas. Oh, what's wrong with you, old man? You want her to wind up an old woman regretting the things she's never done? Well, now, you talk just like the man that took her mother away. You all talk big! She's my granddaughter, and I don't want her hearing it. No, I don't think words can do her any harm, Mr. Johnson. Well, your uh, protecting is very touching, Grandfather. What's she protecting you from, Marty? Everything. And everybody. He thinks he's going to keep me here the rest of my life. Someday I'm going to get away. And end up someplace where nobody cares what happens to you. Anything's better than being locked up. Well, you got spunk, honey. Don't let anyone ever tell you what you ought not to do. You understand, don't you? Well, yeah, I can understand why you'd want to get away from this. Take me away. Marty! What? I could go with you to Mexico. <clears throat> Look, kid, uh, I'm traveling fast, so I have to travel alone. You could leave me any place, any place. Oh, come on, Marty. You know better than that. Use your head. Please, mister. We could use our horses from the corral. Oh, no, you won't. Who's that? Where are you going? Now, where do you think I'm going? That's a stage coming in. I have to take care of it. Stage this time of night? It's late. Way late. Will you mind your own business? What's the matter, Luke? Something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Just think it's kind of a strange time of night for a stage to arrive. It's four hours overdue. Probably got caught in the storm. I've never seen the likes of that wind. <laughs> Hi, Marty. Uh, who they? Oh, uh, the storm blew us in. Uh, but uh, we're leaving in the morning. Sure is a humdinger. <laughs> Horses can't be no time at all. We stopped at Juniper Hole for a couple of hours, figured they'd let up a little, but it didn't. Well, you better get going, Leif. You're way late now. <laughs> That's right, Jesse. So late, in fact, a couple of hours ain't gonna make any difference. Well, I ain't running no hotel. But you're running a line station. And the line passengers are important. So you just end up with all that chatter, Jesse. We're staying here till morning. Think you can fix us up a little bit of grub, Marty? Sure. If Grandpa doesn't... Well, Grandpa can't do anything about it. He works for the stage line. Oh, man. How many passengers are there?
Just two. Guess that's all there is. What difference does it make? None, no difference at all. Ooh. Terrible out there. I've never seen such a wind. How long do you think it'll last? Never can tell, but you'll be able to travel through it come daylight. Ah, uh, we better. I gotta get to San Francisco before the week's out. Oh, stop worrying, Tim. The job will be there. I'm Lucy Fisher. My pleasure, ma'am. I'm Adam Cartwright. Hmm, smells good. Well, we have a very good cook here. Adam Cartwright. And Tim? Well, well. Luke Martin. I haven't seen you since St. Louis, sir. Uh, what is it? Three years? Just about. How are you, Lucy? I'm fine, Luke. Martin, huh? What are you doing out here, Tim? Uh, we're on our way to San Francisco. I got a job managing the new Palace Saloon, if I ever get there. No, I'm gonna check on that driver. No. What? Stay in here. What's the idea? If you're on your way out from St. Louis, you've been hitting the same towns I have. So you're staying in here. Well, we fed the livestock, and I am do the same thing to myself. What's everybody being so quiet about? Let's get to them vittles. Late. This is Luke Martin. Don't. Why did you meet the bossy? When we stopped at Juniper Hole. They're staying there till the storm blows itself out. I figured the storm would delay them as much as me. Well, we might all as well make ourselves comfortable. Put your guns on the table. Down at the end. All right, now step back. you for, Luke? I killed a man. How much uh, money did that kid's father put up? Five thousand dollars. You must really want you, Mr. Martin. Boy, that worthless weaseling kid sure wasn't worth that. He was a liar and a cheat, and he deserved to die. His pa didn't think so. Well, I thought so. And now that you're running, do you still think so? Well, what do you know about it? You weren't there when the kid came across the table with a knife in his hand. That's self-defense, isn't it? Well, not in that town. And that's why I'm running. And that's why I have to travel alone. Well, listen, it's going to be a long night, so let's all sort of relax and enjoy it, huh? Sure spent the night in better places than this. Come on, Marty, let's get that food on the table. What about the posse? Well, they don't know where I am. They'll wait the storm out back at Juniper Hole. Take them about uh, three hours to get here after they start. And besides, if I left, Tim would head right back for the posse. Wind or dust or storm. Wouldn't you, huh, Tim? 
Five thousand dollars, a lot of money. Don't anybody uh, start counting it yet. You know, Marty, you're an awful good cook. Where'd you learn it? Not much else to do around here. Except maybe feed the chickens. Well, anyway, you're good enough to make a living at it if you had to. A girl as pretty as Marty doesn't have to worry about earning a living as a cook. I'm not that pretty. You sure are, honey. Anytime you want a job, you just look me up in San Francisco. I pick the girls. I do the hiring, and don't you forget it. But I pick the girls, and don't you forget that. From the looks of the girls you've picked lately, you must be getting afraid of competition. Listen, you. There ain't a girl from St. Louis to San Francisco that had put up with the stuff I've taken off you in the last ten years. All right, all right. Knock off that chatter out there and bring in some more coffee. What kind of a job are you talking about? Well, it's not for you, Marty. Well, anything's better than this. You got a lot to learn, kid. I've known plenty of nice girls that work the bars. Some of them married pretty good, too. You don't listen to them, honey. Anytime you want a job, you just come and see me in San Francisco. Thanks. I will. Men. You're all alike. Don't pay attention to any of them, Marty. Posse's gonna take a chance on this storm. Seems to be dying down a little. Well, I tell you, I'm a gambler, friend. And I've got a long ride ahead of me. I think I'm gonna stand a lot better chance when the storm is over. Besides, they're lawmen. They're not after bounty money like our friend Tim here. Lousy five thousand bucks, you risk getting yourself killed. Maybe I ought to make you pay for the chance you took, huh? Why shoot him? Why not? He deserves it. Maybe. Where does it end? Well, if he'd gotten his hands on one of those guns, he would have killed me. But he's not you. Sit up there. Maybe next time you won't be so lucky. You can do what you want with us. They'll get you anyway, Luke. You just wait and see. I mean, I would be better off bucking that storm than staying in here. Maybe you'd be better off going back. What does that mean, give myself up? Well, you said the kid came at you with a knife. Maybe you can prove it. With the kid's father owning the whole town? Let's have a laugh together, huh, friend? I see what you mean. What would they do to you if you went back? They'd hang me. Maybe. Maybe only a jail sentence. Well, I'd rather be dead in that case. I know what you mean about jail. It's how I feel around here. Every day, just like the last one. Day after day. We think a little alike, honey. Anyway, I don't plan on going back dead or alive. By tomorrow night, I'll be in Mexico.
should get moving in a few minutes. How long has it been since you slept? Oh, yeah, so long I forgot. It'll be even longer before you reach the border. Well, don't worry about it. I'll make it. That's me, huh? Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Like it? Yeah, I like it. Can I have it? I'd be pleased. You know, I get uh, down to Mexico, I'm going to get a frame for this. So hang it up on the wall. And I'll tell everybody about the pretty girl who drew it for me. Luke. Yeah? It's almost dawn. You'll be leaving soon. Please take me with you. Honey, don't start that again. I could help you. You can help me. I can saddle horses and I can ride as well as anyone. I know the desert. I could show you the way. You really want to get away from here, don't you? More than anything else in this world. All right, go on, saddle up two horses. You mean it? Go on, hurry. <sighs> Not being fair, you know. Well, why is that? Life with me wouldn't be that bad. The moment she gets in your way, you'll drop her. Come on now, she's a big girl. She can take care of herself. That kid's lived here all of her life. She's never been anyplace else. I wanted to just leave her alone. I think I can help her. Well, what are you going to do, get her a job as a cook? Or send her on the way with Tim? That is, if you don't get yourself shot by that old man. No, I think uh, that I know her a little bit better than you do. She'll be all right. She's got spunk, like I said. Anyway, I sort of, uh, I sort of like her. And somebody's got to take her out of this trap. Maybe so, but not you, huh? Well, I think uh, I'm the only one who can do it, Cartwright. Well, at least we know where we stand. with a girl on your hands. Well, I tell you, I think I can. No. No, you're fooling yourself. Everything's ready. I'll just go pack a few clothes. She's not going with you, Luke. We've just been all through that car ride. I'm not going to let her get on that horse. No? Nope. Well, that kind of makes me feel like you're asking me to kill you. Would you? Is taking that girl with you that important? What's with you, Cartwright? Yesterday you didn't even know she existed. Anybody, stranger or not, deserves help when they're walking in the trouble. Well, I don't understand you, friend. But you are right about one thing. It ain't that important to me. Get her down in Mexico, look me up. Tell Marty I'm sorry. Where are you going in those clothes? I'm leaving, Grandpa. Uh, with him? With that killer? No, you can't do that. I won't let you go. 
Marty. Where is he? Where's Luke? He's gone. Oh. oh he's taking me with him. He's not, Marty. He changed his mind. But he promised me. He promised. I know. Oh, leave me alone! Silly dang girl. I ought to go in there and tan her hide good. If you'd ever given her any understanding and a little warmth from your heart, it never would have happened. You started it. It all started when you came here last night. No, it didn't start with me. It started a long time ago, and you know when. I want you to go in there and tell her you're sorry. And promise her a chance in life. I don't know what to say. When somebody you love turns their back on you and rejects you, it's... Well, it's just about the blackest time in the world. And now it's that kind of a time for you. But understand it, Marty. Don't blame your grandfather. Don't blame anybody for what's happened to you. Right now, it could never work out with you and Luke anyway. I know, I could say I have the right to talk another man down, but I don't mean that. I'm not even saying that he's absolutely wrong for you, but... Well, the way he is now, running away from himself, life or whatever it is, it's... Well, the only thing he could bring you is just more pain. See, when you start running, you gotta be sure that you're not just exchanging one trap for another. You don't want to do that, Marty. Life promises too much to just carelessly and foolishly throw it away. and your sketches show a real gift. But it's a gift that's got to grow. It's got to be helped. It's going to help me out here. Well, I think I might be able to help you. 
I've got some great friends in San Francisco. I know they'll be glad to help. But you've got to help, too. You've got to give time a chance. And you've got to give yourself a chance. Come back. What happened? I guess I was wrong. That posse didn't hold up a juniper. They rode on through. I saw him out there and doubled back. I figured you'd never make it. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh, that posse on your heels is kind of late, isn't it? Well, it could be. But I think my luck's still running good. Up to now, friend. Marty, you stay away from him. I shut up, old man. Now, you women, get inside. Hurry up. Larkin, get the saddle off this horse and get in the corral. Come on! Back that stage up. Get in the barn. You sure you know what you're doing, Marty? Listen to a man like that. He'll take me with him this time. You got a lot to learn about men. You in love with that guy? I don't know. I've never been in love. You'll know. When the right man comes along, you'll know. I knew when I was in love with Tim. Are you still? It's different now. Tim's weak where that Luke is strong. Say, maybe that's good. At least Tim ain't being chased by a posse who wants to kill him. I'm uh, sorry to call this reunion so soon after our last goodbye, boys, but uh, that's the way the cards were dealt. So let's all settle down. I don't think we're going to have long to wait. You expect to get out with just your gun? I don't think there's going to be a need for any gun. When you met that posse, I told you your luck ran out. Not yet, my friend. I told you how to end up with him. Now you just wait. They'll be shooting and killing. All right, here they come. Just tell him your grandfather's sick, but keep him away from the house. But, Luke... Don't worry, honey. Everything will be fine. All right. I'll try to get rid of him. Howdy, ma'am. I'm Sheriff Ross, and these are my deputies. We're looking for a man by the name of Luke Martin. Have you seen any strangers around here? No. There hasn't been anyone here since the stage went through last night. We ran into it at Juniper Hole during the storm. Well, they just changed horses and kept on going. Why, in that storm? Well, one of the passengers was in a hurry to get to San Francisco. Yes, he talked about it, Juniper. And don't try anything, friend, unless you want that girl to get caught in a crossfire. And remember, all of you, any one of those bullets can hit you, too. You, uh, you here all along, ma'am? Yes, except my grandfather. He's uh, been sick in bed for the last few days. Oh, that's too bad. Anything we can do for you? No, thank you. He'll be up in a day or so. Then would you mind if we watered our horses? Of course not. Thanks for your trouble, ma'am. Maybe he took a chance and moved on. Well, I guess all we can do is push on and hope to catch up with him. Good girl, Marty. Oh, like you said, she's got spunk. Yeah, when we get out of here, everything might just work out all right. 
You're a long way from getting out of here. I'm out and up. I say it worked. Tim. No, Marty. No. Why'd you have to do it, Tim? Why? For 5,000. How could you blame me? You big stiff. Is that all that's important to you? 5,000. You know what I could do with that kind of money? You could get yourself killed trying to get it. That's what you could do. No more. Working for other people, I, I could have had a place of my own. You darn fool. You, you never would have known what to do with it. You always picked the wrong things. The wrong horses, the wrong women. I picked you, Lucy. deserved killing. All he was thinking about was that reward money. So he died trying to get it. expect me to do? You saw him make his play. You know what he was trying to do. I'm fighting for my life, friend. How many lives do you figure yours is worth? As many as it takes to get me out of here. Luke! You haven't got a chance in there. Send out the girl and the old man. Why get them killed? Send Marty out with Lucy. Nobody leaves here. There's no sense in getting the women shot. What good will it do you? I'll show you what good it'll do me. Don't look like he's going for it. Now what? Well, he's pinned down. He can't get away. Sooner or later, he's got to give up. And listen, I don't want anybody risking his life when they don't have to. Tell the others. Yeah. What's happening? Why aren't they shooting out there? I know they got him pinned down. You don't worry about that. I'm still ahead of them. All they got to do is wait. Yeah? Well, I don't have to wait. I'm taking you out of here. Suppose I don't want to go. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm going to do what I say. You're going to get her killed. That's what you're going to do. All he wants is a hostage. If you want to hide behind a woman's skirt, take me. I'm not asking you either. I'm taking Marty out of here. Well, I'm not going to let you do it, Luke. Don't get in my way, Cartwright. You know how it's going to have to be. All right. If you want me to kill you. No! Luke, I'll go. Don't kill him. It's funny how it's always my choice, isn't it? You figure i got to worry about everybody else's problems and never my own. Well, this time it's going to be different. Come on, Jesse, grab her! Yeah. <laughs> 
place and leave him alone, leave him. Now it's all over, Luke. Well, what are you gonna do, turn me in for the money? No, I don't need the money. Well, I don't see that you get a fair trial. Well, I'll tell you what you can do, you can pull that trigger. No, that's the difference between you and me. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in jail, you understand that? You won't. They're gonna hang you. Let's go. Look, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I wasn't much help, was I? Well, you're lucky you didn't go away with me. Now, maybe you'll get out of here. Listen, uh, there is one thing you can do for me. Well, that depends. You're gonna get $5,000 when you take me out of that posse. Do you see she gets it? So she can get her chance. She's got it. station the other day, Mr. Cartwright, I almost shot you. But if you hadn't come, I'd have probably gone right on being a dang fool the rest of my life. Here they come. Well, Lucy, there's the address of the art teacher in San Francisco. Thank you, Adam. I'll put it right here in my little pocketbook. Don't worry, I'll deliver it safely. I'm sure you will. You gonna be all right? Sure. Maybe I'll find another Tim. With my luck, I always pick that kind of guy. Good luck. Goodbye, Adam. Goodbye, Grandpa. Goodbye, Marty. Now, I was only doing what I thought was right. Oh, I know. <laughs> Can't even look at you without seeing your ma. Same fresh innocence. Same trust. Same hunger for all those things I couldn't give her. You gave me love, just as you gave it to Ma. I understand it now. Oh, well, I, I better get those bags to the coach. Marty, while you're away, you'd better be a good girl or I'll tan your hide. If you don't, I will. Oh, thank you, Adam. Make it mean something, Marty. I will. 